Running is awesome, fact. I'm in love with it for life, and I want you to be too. But there are a number of hard truths about running that have the potential to derail your journey if you don't know them and they take you by surprise. Things about running that might be hard to hear, but by hearing them, you're prepared for them when they eventually happen. I'd love to say running is all sunshine and rainbows and all easy, but let's face it, if it was easy, everyone would do it, but they don't. You do though, so let's keep it that way with nine hard truths of running and how to tackle them head on, like a runner. Back in the day. For point one, let me just set the scene for a second because I've run all of my life, but for a lot of my life, running was the thing that supplemented the thing. Uh, that's because from when I was about six years old to when I was about 32 years old, I played football. So running was a way of helping with that. It supplemented that, but there was a shift about 10 to 12 years ago where running became the thing rather than the thing that helped the thing. And what I learned very quickly when running became the thing, and this is point one, is that it never gets easier. You just get faster. So don't get into running thinking that eventually over time, that 5K PB that you run, it's gonna feel easier when you run it. It doesn't. When you run at your fast speeds, all that happens is you go faster and it feels the same. It always feels grim. And I think a lot of people get into running thinking, one day it'll just feel like I'm gliding all the time and it'll be wonderful. And there is a truth to that when you go on your base runs like now, not all of these are great, but sometimes when you're running easy, you have that transformative feeling that keeps you in running. But trust me when I say, when you're going at the top end, it doesn't feel easier. And once you start getting your head around that fact, I think it's a lot easier to stay in the game. That one, that's the one I'm talking about. That run felt easier, felt nicer, but it was a base easy run. And I'm glad I did it. And point two is, and this is a tough nugget to take for a lot of runners, is if you want to be a runner, you can't just run. Let me start by asking you this question. The majority of you watching this, are you doing something to prepare for when you're not working, for your retirement financially? There's a question for you, the younger people, maybe not, but are most of you? Because it's never made sense to me that we spend so much time and effort preparing for our financial pension, and yet, we don't do the same for our physical pension. This is stolen directly from Simon Ward, by the way, so it's not my idea, but it is something that's resonated with me quite a lot, is that we want a comfortable life for the rest of our life, and financially, that means that you have to invest in a pension, but physically, it means that you have to invest in yourself, and running is not the only thing that you must do when you're a runner. And that's quite a hard thing to take on board at first, because running is the exciting bit. But if we want to run for life and we want to fulfill our potential, then you've got to start thinking about doing the things that you maybe didn't get into running to do, but they're going to help you run long term like, oh, this is a weird shot, isn't it? Like strength and conditioning workouts, like stretching after running, like prehab. I talk about this on the channel all of the time, in fact. But it's a hard truth because if you don't accept it and you don't accept it early, then two things are gonna happen or one of two things. You're gonna pick up injuries because your body is not conditioned enough to do the running that you really, really want to do. Or you're just not gonna fulfill your potential because a stronger body allows you to run faster, allows you to run further. So one of those two things will happen. If you're unlucky, both of those things will happen. But you get your head around it early and you invest in the process and you invest in your physical pension. The world's your lobster, my friends. Tip two is don't play with your food. And what I mean by that is that lots of people come into running thinking that if they restrict some food groups in some way or mess around with food in some way to enhance their training, then it's gonna be the fast track to getting better. And actually, I don't think that that is accurate. I think it's actually quite far from the truth because a good balanced diet of all the right major food groups in the right portions with healthy choices is gonna get you where you want to go faster than anything like 
trying fasted training for example, a much better option is enjoy the food that you eat, make sure that you make the healthy choices, make sure that you have the correct portion sizes and then go out and train and you'll be able to have the quality in the training because you've taken on the food that you need to take on. It's a hard truth that I think a lot of people need to learn because when you come into running your body's going to be needing all this energy because you're going to be doing something completely new. So feed it, fuel it, put something in the engine of the car. The fourth hard truth that is guaranteed to keep you humble and happy is that no matter how good you get at running, there's always going to be someone better than you. And that might sound quite negative if you took it at face value, but here's why, although it can be a hard truth, it's also possibly one of the most important truths to take on board. Comparing yourselves to others can lead you down some disappointing paths. Constantly looking outwards at the times of others and how others placed in a race is really an arbitrary pastime. Do you have control over what others do? No. You only have control over your own performance. So when I say that there is always someone better than you, if you just accept that as a given, it's going to keep you humble, but it'll also mean you start looking at your own training and performance and stop comparing. People often comment on this channel about how fast me or Mary are, but with a PB of 1.16 for a half marathon and the world record being sub 60 minutes, that should give you an indication of just how many faster runners there are than me. And I love that. It keeps me working hard to be my best. Best. It's also the number one thing I try to coach into the children I teach. If you're the best at your school, or even region, or even county, there are usually a lot more that are better than you. So don't worry about being the best, just worry about being your best. And hey, even the best are not unbeatable. Mo in his prime, Elliot has lost a marathon, Paula had her issues. <laughs> hard truth about running is that you can't beat the grind so fancy shoes and bad diets just won't cut it it's consistency over time that is the absolute key to running success it's fair that you can be race ready in 12 weeks or six months but you're never going to reach your full potential until you put in years of consistency and hard work. Bonus hard truth, beach running is hard. Have you heard the phrase, you try and catch all of the rabbits and you're not gonna catch any? No, well, it is a phrase, trust me, I've heard it before. But take that phrase and put it in a running context. And this point is everybody's gonna have an opinion, but you need to find your own opinion. Everybody is gonna have an opinion on how you train, you need to find your own way and you need to dial in on it. Let me explain in a little bit more detail. Oh, and if you're wondering where I am, by the way, we're on holiday, so I'm on the balcony of the place that we're staying. I'll show you in a minute. But when I started training, everybody, the running community, by the way, is such a nice community. Everybody just wants to help. But of course, there's not one training method. There's not just one way to train. There are so many ways to train. And everyone wants to give you their opinion on how to do it best or what's worked for them. And whilst that's brilliant and it can be really helpful, it can get a little bit overwhelming when some people are telling you intervals and hard sessions are the only way that they've trained and it's worked and some people are saying the maffetone method is the way to do it and some people are you get the idea right so my advice is yes listen to people's opinions that's okay but find someone that you trust that knows what they're doing maybe this channel hopefully I did a ding there but someone that you trust that can guide you and double down on what they're telling you and if it doesn't work for you within a year say try something else that's okay that's the way that running works but don't try and do everybody's training all in one go it'll just result in you spreading yourself too thin and not getting the best out of yourself and that's not what you want right find a way of training you really like and go for it and enjoy it and don't think about any other training methods just yet and remember opinions are that they're just opinions they're ways that have worked for some but might not work for others so you have to try and work out a way of sifting your way through the opinions as well we're all trying to help ultimately the seventh hard truth is all about pbs or as you americans call them prs you won't always run them the thing is, in the early days, they can come thick and fast. You're improving with consistency at a great speed, but there will be a time when you don't run a PB, and there might be a significant time between PBs. 
My 5k PB from 2015 wasn't beaten until 2020 to give you an indication of how long I had to wait. But when I did beat it, it went from 1818 to 1715, so it was quite the chunk in the end, and testament to the hard work and consistency. Take PBs for what they are, an indication that your training went well and everything clicked on the day. But don't sweat it if you don't run a PB. Maybe something didn't click, it doesn't mean you're not training well. And while we're on the subject, enjoy every PB as you never know when it's your last. If you stay in the game for life, there's gonna be a time where you slow down, so PBs will eventually stop, and that's okay. If you want the PBs to stop quickly, then make the beginner error of trying to run one on every training run. This is, this is a joke, please do not try and run a PB every run. It's a terrible idea. Every race should be about seeing what's in the tank rather than PBs, and you know what? Sometimes the hardest, grimmest, suckiest runs are the best ones for you. They might not yield a PB, but they make you so much more mentally and physically strong. And tip eight, I think it's tip eight, I've actually lost count by now, is you're gonna regret 100% of the runs that you miss. The fact is, the deeper you get into running, the more you realize it's the runs that you miss, you will regret every time, not the ones that you do. So, if you're tired or you're stressed and you're umming and ahhing about that run, then I promise you this, not going running is only gonna add and compound that misery. You're only gonna be more wound up by the fact that you didn't do it, you will regret it. You will almost never regret it if you get out there and go for your run. The only caveat, I've just gotta stop here because you know, it's quite rocky. The only caveat to that obviously is trying to push through an injury knowing that you're injured and still going out for a run. Now you're gonna regret those runs as well, but they are in the minority in comparison to the runs that you could miss for, let's call them dubious reasons like tiredness or stress, because running is a great stress reliever. Just understand how the body works. It rewards you for doing good things. It rewards you for doing exercise. So you're always gonna get that hit of dopamine when you go out for a run. I haven't had, I genuinely, I don't think I've had a single run yet in my lifetime where I've genuinely regretted going out other than maybe there's two where I pushed through injury. But the rest, five minutes into the run, you're buzzing and you don't regret the decision you've made. And that's a hard truth to take at the start because you will kick yourself when you don't go, not when you do. And tip number nine, the final tip, possibly also the harshest lesson to learn for all of you, is that at some stage, if you're taking running seriously, if you're going further than you have done before, you're very likely to poo yourself. Or at least in the bushes. Uh, I'm sorry if that's too graphic for you, but I think it's best that you're prepared for these things. Because almost any runner that I know that's been running for a long time, it's happened to. I'm not gonna go into too many details or name names, but I will say that it might be worth investing in something called a poo pack where you really pack some tissue paper or some wet wipes in a plastic bag and take it with you on your runs because there is no worse feeling than knowing something's going to happen and not being able to do anything about it. That is literally going to be the title of the book that I'm currently writing by the way, don't forget your poo pack. It's an inevitability, it's going to happen, I think it's best that you know now. In fact, I actually think we should change the phrase, you know, does a bear in the woods. I think it should be does a run up in the woods because pretty much the answer is yes. So I hope these nine tips help you at least deal with your running journey a little bit better so that you're a little bit more prepared for when these things do happen. I'm not saying them so that I can cast running in a negative light. I love running. I'm telling you these so that when they happen, which they inevitably will, you are prepared and you can just brush them aside rather than be completely knocked back or set back by them because these are the hard truths of running they're possibly things that people don't tell you when you start because they want to get you in the game but actually i really believe in setting you up so that you're ready for it because some of those i really wish someone had have told me earlier especially tip nine and I hope they brought a smile to your face as well. Now, over here, I'm linking two videos. One of them is 10 things that you should do to stop running like a beginner. And the second one is a video from last week where essentially Mary and I fell completely apart in a half marathon. It was absolutely awful, but I, I documented it for you so that I hope you enjoy. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. 
and it's something that you want to do, no hard sell from us. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Cheers. I'm off to enjoy my holiday now.